Being Frank, the Chris Seavey story, which is a documentary about Chris Seavey and indeed Frank Sidebottom. Now, you will remember that not so long ago there was the feature film Frank, which... I do remember that. Yeah, which was inspired by, but not about, Frank Sidebottom. And it was... Um, in, it was inspired by based on the memoirs that John Ronson had written about being in a band with Frank Sidebottom. But it wasn't about Frank Sidebottom in the same way that Todd Haynes's I'm Not There was not about Bob Dylan, but it kind of was. It, it sort of inhabited a, a similar universe. Well, now we have Being Frank, the Chris Seavey story, which is absolutely about Chris Seavey and Frank Sidebottom. It began uh, with crowdfunding, and it's a documentary which puts the record straight, or at least as straight as it is possible to put the record on the subject of uh, Frank Sidebottom. So, it is it is really the Chris Seavey story, and um, Chris Seavey was a, a kind of prolific musician and somebody who had a very, very creative and chaotically creative mind. And there are some weird parallels with the Daniel Johnson story, like Daniel Johnson, see if he was obsessed with the Beatles, like Daniel Johnson, he archived his life. I mean, there is video footage from a time when people didn't really have videos. There are tapes, there is, you know, an archive of all the artwork that he did. Um, like Johnson, he was clearly at some points plagued with, uh, you know, with demons. And the film draws on this wealth of material, video cassettes, interviews, newspaper cuttings, television clips to form this kind of papier-mâché collage of his life. So we we start off meeting Chris Seavey in the, the pre-Frank years when he was doing things like the Freshies. And the Freshies were a great pop group and really, really good, good, you know, pop singles. And there was the thing with the girl at the Virgin or certain managed to make a sort of check of yeah. this, which they had to change because of the whole thing about you can't say the man, which, which the success of which was apparently somewhat scuppered by the fact that the week that they were meant to be on top of the pops, there was a strike. And it was back in that time that, that if top of the pops was on strike, it could make or break mm -hmm. a record. And so he had, he had, you know, this really, really good ear for a, for a pop tune, but success proved elusive. And then one day, as we hear from his wife in the documentary, one day they were going to a fancy dress party and um, he made a papier mache head that he called, um, I think it was called John Smith, he said, or something at that point. And the papier mache head then turned into this character called Frank Sidebottom, who was a superstar from Timperley, who talked with, his, with a nose clip on like that and performed with a banjo and a keyboard. And his his act was essentially somebody who was very poor, but also at the same time was very funny. And it just took off. And I was in Manchester at the same time as uh, the Frank Sidebottom thing was happening. In fact, I gigged with the Frank Sidebottom, although to sort of take the plug out that slightly everyone who was in Manchester at that period gigged with Frank Sidebottom because Frank Sidebottom played all the time, anywhere and everywhere. Anyway, here's a clip from the documentary. Frank was obsessed with Chris and suddenly appeared like some kind of weird stalker. Well, here we are, just in time. Sounds like some more man still on. They sound rubbish. Absolutely. <laughs> It was around December 1982, Chris did Frank for the first time as his own support act. I only remember him being there and people being shocked by this bloke with a big paper mache head, as I was. All those years writing songs and then he ends up being taken over by Frank. Hey, what's hello, Chris? Eh? I'm Frank. What do you mean you're Frank, eh? Oh, who's rattled your cage then? Look, I'm getting sick of you, mate. <laughs> So it's really hard to explain what it was about the Frank Sidebottom. I mean, it was it was the most bizarre, surreal comedy. It became all the more surreal when Frank developed this sidekick called Little Frank, who was a ventriloquist doll. So you had a giant puppet working a ventriloquist's doll. And then the ventriloquist doll later got a girlfriend, which was another ventriloquist doll that didn't have a head. And so there was one area of it in which it was just the most weird, surreal comedy. There was another area of it in which it was basically pop songs all done like that. So, you know, there's, oh, blimey, it's Christmas, I hope we get some snow. And I think there was a... It was a, like the Radio Timberley show, which then became this television programme, which had kind of the anarchy of Tiz Was, and also that sort of strange 
character interview comedy that later we'd see in things like Mrs. Merton. There's this thing when he famously when he interviewed David Soul on his programme, and David Soul did not know what was going on. And Frank's question was, have you ever been on an aeroplane? What was it like? And then he, <laughs> he interviewed Emma Bunton. He said, did you, did you write your new single? She said, yes. He said, what colour pen did you use? And it, But it was, it was genius, and yet it was also crazy. And one of the things that the documentary is about is about how the Frank character kind of became something that Chris Seavey, you know, he had created, but it kind of overtook him. And what I really liked about it, firstly, you hear from the members of the family about the things about him that were great, the things about him that were difficult. Secondly, the documentary does capture the the proper madness of the Frank Sidebottom performance thing, because it was, it was this really strange performance art thing that was also just a joke about somebody with a nose clip on doing that. And you get this really affectionate and very, very thorough kind of telling of a life story. But for me, the thing that I think was most touching was that behind it was this guy who was a really good songwriter and had written really good pop songs. And at one point he says, said, um, what's the highlight of your career? And he says, Paul McCartney. If I'd met Paul McCartney, that would have been the highlight of my career. And that was kind of the essence of it. It was like the unachieved success that then turned into this bizarre thing that has already spawned this, you know, this movie starring Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender as Frank, but not as Frank, but as a version of Frank. It's a it's a really well made documentary. We get interviews from people like C.P. Lee in a nightshirt, which is really bizarre, and people do talk quite openly about the almost kind of split personality of Chris and Frank. And I, I thought it was really engaging. Whether or not you remember that... I mean, Mark Radcliffe is in it because, because Mark Radcliffe played with Frank Sarbanes. I mean, he says it was like a world in which the normal rules didn't apply. It was just this kind of crazy, childish comedy. It was also profoundly surreal. And you, you could never really... It's a guy in a papier-mâché head with a clothes peg on his nose. 